Uh, we want to bring in author and founder of Migration Films. That is Matthew Robinson, who I understand, Matthew, good afternoon to you. You believe the marches should be allowed to go ahead. I think you are going along. Can you explain to our listeners and viewers what your reasoning is? Okay, yes. Um, I believe the marches should go ahead, and I'm glad they are going ahead. Um, I'll be attending. Um, I have been documenting these marches since 2021. I'm a humanitarian filmmaker, so, um, and as a humanitarian, not supposed to take sides. However, when I saw what was happening in Al-Aqsa Mosque and Jerusalem in 2021, I started to film the protests. I felt the mainstream news was not covering it properly, so that's why I'm going to be there. If I wasn't filming, I would be there raising my voice, calling for a ceasefire. Now, um, I, I, obviously, you know, I think one of the key things here is the divisive, you know, Suella Braverman calls these hate marches. They're not hate marches. Her speech is hate speech. She's causing division within communities. Um, her, she has a, a, a conflict of interest, as does Rishi Sunak. They both have links to Israel. Rishi Sunak's wife's father created emphasis. So they have a link to Israel. So he already has a conflict of interest. So his opinion, as far as I'm concerned, means nothing. Sorry, Same Mr. For Mr. Robinson, are you seriously suggesting that because Rishi Sunak's wife's father has shares in a company that happens to be based in Israel, that's informing his position on this? Is that is that seriously your view? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And as far as um, uh, as far as you know, it being on the Armistice weekend, you know, um, I've always uh, been respectful to a fallen from battle from all the world wars you know and it's 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 important that we do they fought for our freedom but i think also what's important and i spoke to jeremy corbyn said this to me on saturday last saturday when i interviewed him he said that you know what better on to honor to those dead who th those people who died in world wars than to call for a ceasefire because the armistice was a ceasefire and therefore to march on armistice day seems a very very fitting thing to do some people will say that is absolutely a valid point, Matthew, but what about the fact that there will be tens of thousands of people taking part in this demonstration? How disrespectful do you think it is towards the military veterans who are going along on Saturday to pay their respects? And they might feel incredibly intimidated by 70,000 people on the streets. Well, I think it's probably going to be close to upwards of 500,000, to be honest with you. Um, and right, I well, would say how intimidating that is that? Half a million people well, protesting with flags. All. And mm. I know there are a lot of people that are peaceful, and I'm sure you're one of them, but you do know that there are people that are supporters of Hamas as well. There are extremist elements there. Oh, there, I, I can't comment on that because I don't know that for a fact. But what I can comment on is the fact that the march is starting an hour later, after the two-minute silence, after 11 a.m. It's starting 1.7, no, starting 1.5 miles away, and it's finishing 1.7 miles away. Nobody will be going near the cenotaph, and if anybody does, they deserve to be arrested, because it, the cenotaph needs to be left for the soldiers to, to honour their fallen, and I believe that will happen. And if there are splinter groups that go towards the cenotaph, then they deserve to be arrested. But this protest is peaceful. This is everyday people, men, women and children. I mean, I'm part of a WhatsApp group of journalists from Gaza and the West Bank, and I see the most horrific things every single day. And for there not to be a ceasefire accord is frankly barbaric. This government, I hope that there are uh, human rights lawyers around the world who are preparing legal papers to to take action against our prime minister, our home secretary, the lead, the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, as well. It is absolutely shocking what's going on. And what happened on the 7th of October, it was horrific. But that's, that's happened. This is an ongoing slaughter of men, women and children. 50% of the population of Gaza are children, and they're being bombed with white phosphorus. You know, that's that's banned. Yet there seems to be this, you know, this this fake selective outrage, selective humanity, selective decency around what is going on. And it's frankly, it's very worrying. It's it's I don't know how else to describe it. Other than of course, what the government sick. 
What the government and indeed uh, the leader of the opposition would say to that is they're calling for uh, humanitarian pauses to allow for humanitarian aid and indeed people to leave. But a ceasefire would simply allow Hamas to rebuild the kind of resources it deployed to carry out the largest How? slaughter of Jewish That's... people since the Holocaust. Yeah, what you said, that was the largest slaughter of Jewish people since the Holocaust, and it's horrific. And my heart goes out to all the Jewish communities around the world and in Israel. However, how are Hamas going to re... re <laughs> have you seen what's going on over there? It's flattened. There is no way... Pe children are having limbs amputated on the street. There's no anaesthetic. There's no electricity. Pe pe people are... Uh, th there's no... Uh, Hamas are siphoning with, with a, with a fuel of, away from hospitals to fuel their rocket fire at Israel. Hamas, over the last seven years, haven't built a single bomb shelter for children and civilians special. in Gaza. Instead, they build tunnels for their terrorists. Would a humanitarian pause actually allow humanitarian aid and support to the Palestinian people when Hamas has consistently, over the last decade plus, used their resources, used their billions of dollars in wealth to fund arms rather than aid? I'm curious to know where you get your facts from regards to billions, billions of dollars of wealth. However, you know, listen, I'm not saying that I support anything or anyone. I support a ceasefire. That's what I'm calling for. And a, a humanitarian pause. The, the chief of MSF, Medicine Sans Frontier, uh, Doctors Without Borders, um, she was interviewed yesterday and, and she said, you know, a humanitarian pause is not going to do anything. It's going to stitch the people up and then you're going to bomb them again. There needs to be a ceasefire. And, and anything less than that is tantamount to being complicit to war crimes. That's what I believe, and that's what I would say a vast percentage of the voting population of this country believe. And many people I know, I'm, I'm white, I'm English, born Christian, I became Muslim, and I'm telling you now, I was on a tube after a protest a couple of weeks ago, and um, I was talking to someone, and, uh, and they were like, oh, and I, and I, had, I had a sticker, Palestine sticker. I said, would you like one? They're like, oh, no, better not. And then one person leant across, and I'll have one. And another person, people of different nationalities, were like, yeah, we'll have one, please. And then the lady was like, I'll have one, but I'm just a bit scared to speak out. And that seems to be generally the, the situation with, with the population. And, and, and this march on Saturday, the fact that it's going ahead is a good thing. It's an honour to the dead of all our world wars. And it's what is necessary. You know, we talk about armistice. You talk about peace then this is exactly what is needed, this march, and I hope that more people come and join. I hope more people come and join. I call for people to come and join this march because it's not about, it's not just about Palestine, it's about humanity, it's about decency. In a world nowadays where there's fake news and, 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 and it seems that common decency is, is slipping away with, it, it, behind uh, a, a narrative of, um, of you know, a political one-upmanship. Matthew Robinson of Migration Films, we really appreciate you putting your, your points uh, across this afternoon here on GB News. Thank you. Thank you.